go into your working folder and reopen up Cool Dude with plastic water bottle, or what we like to call 649 underscore 332 another image from Photo Spin. My goal in life, and probably is yours too, is what I print or display looks like what I saw. So we talked about assigning a profile, and that's going to help. Now, if there are colors in this image that are out of gamut, the profile knows how to handle them with intent. And we chose perceptual, which helps the colors that the output device like a printer really can't do, blend them in as naturally as possible. But sometimes I just don't like intent because it's controlling the process and I'm not and I'm a control freak. So let me show you a couple of things that we can do to work around intent and do some of the work ourselves before we, well, say print it. Now, number one, if you go up to the word view on the pull down menu, you will see proof colors. Make sure that's on so we can see them. Next, go to proof setup and choose where you're going out to. Let's say we're going out to a CMYK press. So, working CMYK. You also have things even like color blindness. I think this one's red and that one's green. But if I click here, watch the image. They're doing everything they can to help you out here. Let's go back into view and go into proof working CMYK. Okay, that's better. Now, come back up and turn on gamma warning. Now, watch what happens to the image. Now, there's a shortcut for this, so let me turn it on and off so you can see it. And that's Control-Shift-Y in Windows and Command-Shift-Y on a Mac. What is that? And is it going to print? No. That's a mask that's laying over on top of all the areas based on our intent that won't make the color switch to the output device. Now again, we have intent set up, so it's going to take care of that. But maybe I'd like to do a little bit of the work myself right now. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. One's old school and the other one is new school. Let's start old school. Create a blank layer. Just click down here. Change the blending mode of that layer to saturation. Let's call it saturation. Why not? Now, pick up your paintbrush. You will notice that my color down here is black. If it isn't, make it black. Press the letter D on your keyboard, and that will convert that into black and white down here. Now, watch what happens when I paint in a saturation blending mode layer with pure black. It converts areas to grayscale. It does get rid of my gamut warning. Let me go ahead and press undo. What is out of gamut? Nine times out of ten, it's not it can't produce the color. It can't produce the saturation of the color and that vibrancy that we get with additive color. We're looking at a monitor that's just blowing out at us. You know, all this projection kind of stuff going on, red, green, and blue. Subtractive color is CMY, sine magenta yellow, requires a light source bouncing off the paper, absorbing wavelengths, and producing colors. It can't produce that bada-bing kind of just really cool color. So we get out of gamut areas. Okay, that's why they're there. Nine times out of ten. If I would like to see if I can remove some of that color, I don't want a pure black at 100%. I'm going to change the opacity of the brush to about 20. Okay, now I come over here. Watch what happens when I begin painting. Okay, it's not doing it all, is it? It's only a 20% brush. Now, since I've got my flow at 100%, as long as I keep my finger on the paintbrush, it won't overflow that 20%. So if I get that much reduced in that one area, I let go of my mouse, and I do it again. Now, it would take a bit of time to do the whole image. But if that gray area is not there, that means that area is now, according to the computer and the output device based on your profile, it's okay. It's going to print. Now that would, like I said, take a bit of time. Let's do the new school way. Let's get rid of saturation, throw it away. Come down into your adjustments right here and choose vibrance. Now if you have an older version of Photoshop, you might want to choose you and saturation because you won't have vibrance. But go ahead and choose vibrance if you have it. Now you have two options. The vibrancy, the overall vibrancy of the color, and the saturation of the color. Watch what happens when I come over here and reduce. Now it will get rid of all of them, but in doing so, I'm losing the color in the image across the board. 
Let me go back up to the word view and turn off gamut warning for a second. And then let's go ahead and turn this on and off. And you could see, I don't want that. The only areas that were impacted were these over here. Let's take saturation back to zero. Let's turn the gamut warning back on for a minute. Select the mask over here. Go into the masking options and choose color range. Now check this out. In color range, you have sample colors, but you also have one for out of gamut based on our profile. And you select it, and it creates a mask, and the only areas it will change are the areas that are out of gamut. Click OK. Now let's turn it back on. Now watch those areas. I like to work with vibrance and saturation and not just one of them. But as I do vibrance, see it's starting to go away. Maybe a little bit of saturation here. Okay, now check that out. They're gone. If we close this out and let's turn off the gamut warning and turn it on and off, I see very little difference. And sometimes it's so minuscule you really can't tell but I'm controlling the process. Now I flatten this into here and print, and then I've controlled those areas and decided exactly what I want them to be. The profile will do it for you, but sometimes it doesn't do what you want it to do. Here's your next best way.